Hello, thanks for watching this episode of Lessons on Galatians. I'm Pastor Mike Seifert from Living Hope Lutheran Church in Midlothian, Virginia. In our last lesson, we used contextual clues from the letter of Galatians itself and from the book of Acts to, to identify the original recipients of this letter as formerly pagan Gentile Christians in or around congregations Paul had founded on his first missionary journey in the Roman province of Galatia. Now we want to shift our attention to the antagonists of the letter. We'll call them the rivals. They were actively undermining Paul's work and therefore also the Galatians' faith in Jesus. Not in outwardly hostile or violent ways like the persecution Paul had experienced on his first missionary journey. These rivals were friendly, they were persuasive, and they were probably convinced that they were doing these new-to-the-Bible Gentile Christians a favor by adding to what Paul had taught them. But what they were really doing was perverting the gospel so that it was no longer the gospel. The threat this posed to the Galatian Christians was so serious that Paul refused to pull any punches with his words. As an example, he said to the Galatian Christians, You who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. In regard to the rivals, he wrote, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Let's look for contextual clues in the letter to flesh out what we can about these rivals and what kind of false teaching they were pushing in Galatia. Fortunately, even though Paul doesn't write directly to the rivals in the letter, he writes enough about them to give us a good picture. Right away at the beginning, he writes, Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, since he's writing to the churches in Galatia and he says some people here and not some of you, it's clear that these rivals were outsiders. They may or may not have been from the province of Galatia, but they were not members of the Galatian churches. Going over to chapter 5, we can see these outsiders were pushing circumcision on the Galatians, which would most certainly make them Jewish. So at the very least, these rivals were Jewish outsiders who were pushing circumcision on the Galatian Christians. Circumcision was a central part of Jewish identity, codified in the laws God gave the Israelites along with the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai through Moses. So now the question is, was circumcision the only part of Jewish law that they were promoting? In chapter 4, verse 10, Paul remarks that the Galatians were observing special days and months and seasons and years. That was also a part of Moses' law. Think the Sabbath day, new moon celebrations, the Passover, the year of Jubilee. These rivals were promoting the whole Old Testament code. They were telling these Gentiles that they had to become Jews. They weren't advocating a wholesale rejection of Jesus or teaching that Jesus wasn't a savior. And we can observe that from the general way Paul writes about Jesus. He doesn't try to convince the Gentiles of their need for Jesus. They were already aware of that. Instead, he argues for the all-sufficiency of Jesus. The Galatians don't need to become Jewish or observe Jewish law in order to receive salvation through Christ. Salvation doesn't come from faith in Jesus plus obedience to Jewish law or any other law. It comes solely through faith in Jesus. We'll flesh out the picture of the rivals some more as we make our way through the letter, but for now let's picture Jewish Christians, or at least nominally Christian, who came among the formerly pagan Gentile Christians in Galatia and were trying to change or expand Paul's message from Jesus only to Jesus plus obedience to Jewish law. Paul has zero tolerance for this false teaching. You who are trying to be justified by law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. <laughs> 